my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my dream
holy one of mystery and power. There is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below, keeping covenant and steadfast love with all who walk before you with pure and upright hearts. Fill our lives with your glory as you filled the temple with cloud when Solomon first brought the ark into your holy dwelling place. Give us the strength and the power to withstand the forces of evil at work in our lives and in our world. Amen. Let us join together in our call to worship. Put it on, somebody. Put on God's wardrobe. Put on God's clothing, which is strength and power. Put it on, somebody. Put it on, somebody. Put on God's dress so that you can fight the right fight. Not against flesh, but against foolishness and powerlessness. Put it on, somebody. Put on the belt of truth so that you can stand. Put it on. Put it on. Put on the shoes of peace so that you can stand. Put them on. Take out the shield of faith. Deny the structure of trust with the devil and sin. Take it up and put it on. Put it on. Clothe yourself with prayer. Help somebody else in prayer. Put it on, somebody. Put on God's wardrobe and stand. Um, we're doing the blessing of the backpacks today, and I know I saw AJ has a backpack. Does anybody else have a backpack today? Oh, bring them on down here for a second. Oh, and we have, do we have Easton and Hunters here too? <laughs> Minus Easton and Hunter, but we'd love to be happy to bless their backpacks as well. I'm going to put them up here, but don't forget to grab them. Let's, let's leave them up here. Let's put them right there. And grab them before you leave. I know we're going to go to Sunday school. But... All right, thank you. I would like um, all of the students or teachers or faculty or recess aides or bus drivers, if you work for a school system or a college, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. All of you students, raise your hand. I know you're here. <laughs> All right, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our schools, for these backpacks that everywhere that they might go this year that we will know some peace. So let's pray. God, education is so important that we would learn more about our world, who we are, that we might grow and unfold as we become educated. God, we just ask that you be with the students. Bless these backpacks that wherever they may roam, wherever they may go, there would be peace and learning and growing in your name. We ask that you help teachers to be full of knowledge and facts that they will pass on, but mostly, God, that they would just be wise in your ways, that they might love their students and share your love in their classrooms and help everyone that comes through their doors to grow and unfold in good and healthy ways. God, we pay, pray for the administrators and all of the hands that care for our preschoolers all the way through our college students, feeding them, watching over them at recess, teaching them, playing with them, guiding them, nurturing them, feeding them. Be in the midst of it all, God. We just hope that everyone has a good and healthy year 
And we just ask that you walk with each of our students, letting them know that you were with them every step of the way, loving them, and hoping that they feel who it is that you are calling them to be. Amen. I'm going to invite all of the children who would like to to come to Sunday school with me. We're going to help make the meal for Trinity. Good morning, everyone. Great to see everyone here today. Uh, whether you are a longtime worshiper, first time visitor, or online follower, we're grateful to have you with us. Just a couple things that I, I wanted to share with you. This Saturday, I believe, is our last market for the season. So if you haven't been out uh, this season, uh, that wonderful ministry that we do with uh, our community and our neighbors, we invite you to come out, bring some friends with you. Uh, we're going to try to make a big day of it. So it's 9 to 1 this Saturday morning. Wonderful outreach to uh, our community and to our neighbors. Would love to have you be a part of that. Uh, Pastor Erica also wanted me to share that if you are a part of uh, one of the youth programs, uh, especially Confirmation and our younger group, we call them the SALT group. That's our 4th, 5th, and 6th graders. We're going to be sending out um, those schedules for the new year. Uh, I believe this week, and so be looking for those. And uh, uh, regular uh, uh, older uh, youth uh, is going to be starting on Sunday evenings here, coming up pretty soon as well. So just be looking for all of that information as she sends that out, and we're going to have a try to have a great year with our youth program. As Air Pastor Eric already said, you know we're um, many people are going back to school this coming week, and so we want to just lift up uh, prayers of support. For all of those people who work in our school system, we know just getting people started out on the right foot in life uh, uh, as they move into their adult years is so, so important. So we're glad that you're here. We pray that God has prepared your heart for uh, just receiving all that God has to offer you during this time, during our time of prayer and music and uh, sharing the word with you, both read aloud and, and, and preached from the pulpit. Uh, we just pray that God puts on your heart... Uh, a uh, receptiveness to receive that which is going to get you through whatever trial might come your way in the coming week. Amen. Let faith rise up in you.
Let's pray together. God, uh, I, I know that there's some people uh, who are in our midst this morning that have special heavy things on their hearts today. And even though we might not fully know what they are, we know that you do. And so we just commit their prayers and their lives to your care and to your love, to your guidance. And we pray, Lord, uh, a special blessing upon those who might be struggling today. We want to pray for uh, those just this weekend who uh, we, we know are going to be experiencing the first hurricane that they've experienced for since the last 30 years. And we pray that they've prepared well, that you keep their houses and their dwelling places strong. We want to pray for earthquake victims in Haiti, Lord. Uh, we, we know that... So many are homeless right now or in the hospital in desperate need of care. And we pray that uh, if they haven't already arrived, that there is provision coming to help take care of them. We want to pray for the, the turmoil going on in Afghanistan, Lord. Uh, we know that there are so many just seeking to go to a place that they simply feel safe. Lord, we pray your protection around each and every one of them. And we pray, Lord, that uh, you give us, as a country who might be able to do something about, who can do something about that, 
to help be a part of that care. Lord, uh, we just commit to you our lives again today. We give you our hearts and our minds and our souls. We commit our feet to walking the path that you would have us go. Uh, we commit our lives to doing your work, your hands, to be able to reach out to those uh, who need a little bit extra help and boost up. We pray, Lord, our Lord for, uh, for all of our schools that are going to be going back into session this coming week, including our own school here uh, at Treehouse. We pray for each classroom, each teacher, and we pray, Lord, that uh, you just um, build classrooms of love and compassion and care. God, it is your path that we seek to walk. It is your path that we seek to uncover. It is your path that we seek to live out. And we do so today with new assurance that you are taking us to yet another promised land. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.
Uh, if you weren't able to count, that was 15 bells, eight chimes, and one keyboard. Thanks, Jill Dean. I'm uh, going to read a passage for you to do uh, uh, for you uh, uh, out of a letter that uh, Paul wrote to the people at Corinth, and he's really giving them some encouragement. He's reminding them that all of them have a place, uh, have a piece to play in how the church is emerging and how they love and support one another and play their part is critical for success in building God's early church. And so we find ourselves in the 12th chapter. I've only picked out verses 21 to 26 to share with you today, but it's part of a larger passage, uh, which is chapter 12, of talking about how important it is to play your part in the body of Christ and that no peace is greater or lesser than any other, but all of them working together honor God's kingdom. So uh, here we go, verse 21 uh, beginning in the 12th chapter of First Corinthians. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. God's word for God's people. So if, if you haven't noticed, I, I haven't been here for a couple weeks. <laughs> I've been gone the last two Sundays. And uh, I had the chance to uh, take a, a my, a backpacking trip with my brother. Many of you know that, you know, one of my passions in life has been backpacking with my identical twin brother. We took my nephew with us as well, his son. He's 19 now, uh, first year of college, and uh, Jeff's been hiking with him since the fifth grade, so he's got a lot of experience too. And so we, our intention was to go out of country, but with all of the stuff with international travel, we really decided last January that if we were going to be able to do this, we probably needed to stay in country. So we picked a place that has really been on our bucket list, but we haven't done before, and it's in New Mexico. It's a place called the Gila Wilderness. Now, I haven't met somebody yet who has known where that is, and I don't blame you. Um, wilderness areas that are designated in America, you can't, there's nothing motorized that can go into them, which means that there's no roads, there's no campgrounds, you have to walk into it. And the Gila Wilderness is, it's found in the extreme western border of New Mexico. Now, a lot of people, when they think of New Mexico, uh, they think of the desert region, but this is far from it. We were between like seven and 11,000 feet most all of the week. So it was more high altitude stuff, more uh, so much so that, you know, right here in St. Louis, we're, I think, about 385 to 400 feet above sea level. Of course, my brother down in Florida lives about 35 feet above sea level. So when we flew in for the first time on Friday, we the closest airport was El Paso. We had to quickly drive up to a the closest town that had access to the trailhead, it was a little place called Silver City, but it was important to, for us to sleep at a higher altitude so we didn't get sick, altitude sickness going up any higher because we live at a much lower altitude. So Silver City sits around 6,000 plus feet. You know, the Gila Wilderness, it's named because there's actually Gila monsters there. I didn't have the privilege of seeing one while I was there, I wish I would have, but that's where it gets its name. And the fascinating part about this place is that the scenery is absolutely incredible. I would rival it against any national park that I've ever been to, but it is a wilderness area. 
And so uh, it comprises the headwaters of the Gila River. They got really creative with the names. Up in this wilderness area, you have the East Fork, the Middle Fork, and the West Fork. <laughs> And they all come together to form the Gila River, which is a pretty prominent river in New Mexico. It eventually makes its way west and joins up with the Colorado somewhere around Yuma, Arizona. And it is also purported to be the place that Geronimo was born at the headwaters of the Gila River. The last people to inhabit this area were the Mongolian tribes, which many of you probably might better know as the people who lived in the cliff dwellings. In fact, the very first night that we were out, we had picked a place to camp and we're picking out, you know, where, where am I going to pitch, pitch the tent for the three of us? And we look up on the bluff and there it is. There's this 800 year old plus cliff dwelling way up on, on, on the bluff that's just there for our private use and, and enjoyment. So the Mongolian tribes moved out about somewhere between 1200 and 1230, and the land has pretty much been undisturbed back there for 800 years. So here's what's significant. You know, what, what called us to, to go into a place like this? Well, first of all, the Gila Wilderness is the very first wilderness area designated by Congress back in 1924, the very, very, very first one. And part of what makes it so unique is the middle fork of the Gila River is actually the Continental Divide, literally the Continental Divide. So when you cross it, you're on one side of the continent. When you're on the other side, you're on the other side of the continent. And because of that, it has created these amazing geologic features when you're walking through there. I mean, cliffs that hem you in that are thousands of feet tall that you couldn't possibly climb out of unless you were doing a technical climb with rope. Uh, and harnesses, it is beyond beautiful, and yet, you know, it is one of the wilderness areas or one of the least visited pl places uh, in America. Y you can't drive into it. You can't uh, drive a camper into it. You can only walk, and in some cases, they'll let you take livestock or a, or a horse, uh, a mule. Um, and so it called us uh, to be able to go there this year, and uh, that did not come without a whole bunch of challenges along the way. So the first challenge that we encountered happened the very first night. It's the it was the rainy season while we were there, so it rained almost every day. Um, and when it rained, what the ground is made out of oftentimes would turn the river from crystal clear to looking like chocolate milk. <laughs> and so... Getting clean water was an obstacle that we had all week long. Oftentimes, we'd have to take it out of the river and let it sit in a, in a portable, uh, uh, collapsible bucket that we had. The silt would set, and then we oftentimes had to filter it through a clean bandana. And then we were back flushing our water filters all week long to be able to make sure that we continued to have uh, clean water. Now, partly because of COVID over the last year and a half, and the, the, the few amount of people that go into a place like this, uh, many, at many places, the, the trail was not visible. So when you have established trails, there's only two ways to keep them established. Either you have trail crews back there every once in a while to help clear things out, or you have enough people going through there that it is keeping the brush down on the actual trail. So people have asked me a lot of times over the years, have you ever been lost? So the answer, that's kind of a loaded question. I've lost the trail many times over the years, but that's because it has been so uh, lowly impacted that I, you can't distinguish it between anything else that's around it. So we were probably off trail at least thir a third of the time. Probably took, you know, Jeff said, man, you must have taken 100 compass readings today uh, trying to make sure that we were on the right path. So I, I, I've lost the trail many times, but I've never lost where I was on the map. Here, here how, here's how that gets a little complicated. The reason that they establish trails is because, you know, especially when you're going up and down gorges, mountains, uh, they, will, they will cut the trail into the side of a cliff or the side of a, a mountainside to, really to kind of keep you safe. You'll zigzag, they do what's a switchback. You'll have a lower grade where you'll come down to one point and then it'll slowly work your, its way down the mountain. But when you lose the trail 
and you know where you're on the map, and you know what direction you head, you don't have that luxury. And so uh, you have to kind of make your way down until you find the trail again. Luckily, we had a 19-year-old with us that we just sent over the side and say, hey, you know, let us know when you find it again. (laughs) One of the safety things you always bring with you, it sounds so simple, but is a whistle. We always have whistles with us, and we have a set of whistle patterns that we blow to be able to communicate with one another if we are out of earshot or eyeshot of one another. And so that's exactly what we did. You know, I know where we're on the map. I know we need to be headed in this direction. We don't know where the trail is. We'd said no over the side. And then, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, you'd hear that whistle blow that in that certain pattern. And, you know, hey, we need to follow you and we're going to find our way down to where the trail is again. And we're just going to keep going. You know, all of that put us way behind over the course of the week. And the last three days, Jeff and I were actually talking. This has never really happened to us, but we provisioned for it. Uh, But we were talking, hey, we realistically might have to be out here another day or two to get out. So we're we're, we're talking about that. You plan for that. That's like backpacking 101. You always provision uh, in case you have to spend another night or two out there because something has happened that has slowed you down. Now, I will tell you, out of all of those things, water, not being able to see the trail, the weather, we were in a couple hailstorms while we were out there. At some point, you can, uh, uh, my, my, my nephew sent my wife a, a, phone, a, a little video uh, of us uh, in a hailstorm, sent it to her iPhone, so at some point when you track her down, she can show that to you. But the, the biggest obstacle really was, was, was the river itself. So you're going up these big, huge canyon gorges. Uh, we went up the West Fork, made our way over uh, the top of the, this mountain range, the Gila Mountain Range, and we came back down the Middle Fork. And so in all, we forded the river 173 times. Now, why is that important? Is you, that normally would, crossing a river wouldn't be a big deal to us. But crossing it that many times, there was only two out of the eight days that, that we were out that our feet were dry. Now, I can deal with that, but any time that I'm ever talking to anybody about possibly going and doing a backpacking trip for the first time, I will tell them, you can skimp on all of your gear You can buy a cheaper backpack, an economy sleeping bag. Don't ever skimp on your boots. Don't ever skimp on your footwear. About midweek, with all those river crossings, and we had some nice footwear with us, our boots started falling apart. In fact, out of the three of us, I'm the only one who brought my boots home because I was already thinking about this sermon already, and I thought, me just telling you all will not do the image justice. So, I brought my boots this morning, and... (laughs) That happened on day four out of eight days, so you're you're back four days in. It's not going to be... It's going to be just as fast coming out as it is backtracking. So you have to just kind of think through the problem. You know, uh, you, 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 you tie what's called, it's an intricate, very intricate set of knots called a boot cradle. It took me about 45 minutes at least every morning to, to tie those, which means that you don't take them off at lunchtime, you know, to let your feet have a break uh, from your boots at lunchtime. You keep them because it takes so long. But it's this intricate set of knots to be able to get the pressure points at the right place. And at one point, my, my nephew had hiking shoes, not boots, but he was old enough that we, he, he, uh, we, we, we're close to the same size now. He's, his foot's just slightly bigger than mine. And he had some cross-country shoes with him as his extra pair. So he was kind enough to let me use his for a couple days while he ran, uh, used his trail runners. All of these obstacles, not always knowing, you know, where the trail is, water, heavy brush, water crossings, and never once ever did I ever think to myself, we're not going to get out of here. 
you know, when you're in a situation like that, you know, the only resources that you have is what you're carrying on your back and then the people that you're with. And as I'm walking down the trail, I'm thinking to myself, that is true for all of us. All of those things are just a metaphor for what God calls us to do as the people of Christ. And so I'm walking down the trail and I'm remembering these verses that Paul is writing to the people of, of, at Corinth to give them encouragement about how, how important it is to be the one body of Christ. I mean, listen, listen to these last two verses. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. But if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. I, w- I want you to just think about, you know, uh, you, your, the, the place in which you work, your family, your church. All of that rings true because we never fail or succeed by ourselves. It's really oftentimes because of a group that is willing to play their part and work together together because if they don't then every part suffers but if they do every part is honored i'm remembering these verses that paul writes to the people at corinth and it was applicable for the moment that what i was living in and i thought but it's applicable for us in our everyday lives each and every moment because families that succeed understand that the part that each family member plays is important. One's not less or more than the other, but when they all play their part, the family is honored. But when they don't all play their part, don't they all suffer? Isn't that like uh, true, ring true for the places in which you work? When one person doesn't do what they are called or hired to do, everybody suffers. But when everybody is supporting the direction, the project that you're going, that you're doing, then everything is honored. And it's true for the church as well, too. I mean, we've been through some trying times in the last year and a half. But God is going to honor us. I believe that. And it's not going to be because of your pastors or any one person. It's going to be because of all of us that we've recognized the value that we play and how important it is. I I, I know people, you know, all the time that say, I don't need to become a part of a church. You know, I, when I'm out hunting and I'm by myself, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, that's, that's my church and, and that's how I honor God. Well, that's great for you, but that's not what Paul's talking about. Paul's talking about what, what part do you play in the body of Christ? What part do you play for others? And that is when God's king, God is honored. That's when we succeed. So it, most of you have heard the phrase, you know, God helps those who help themselves. That does not come from a Bible verse. It does not come from a prophet of the Bible. Ben Franklin said that. And that is exactly the opposite of what Paul is telling this congregation. We want to think that all I need is me. And that's a lie. All I need is us. Because when we love and support and play the part that we are all called to play in the greater body, that's when everyone is honored. So it's not, it's not so much that God helps those who help themselves. God helps those who help someone else. God helps those who love someone else. God helps those who play their part as the body of Christ. And when that happens, when that doesn't happen, we all suffer. But when it does, I love that word that we are all honored. And most importantly, God is honored. We're meant to be in this together. This thing called life. With all of these obstacles, I never, ever, ever once for a second thought to myself, we're not going to get out of here. What I did think to myself over and over again is that this small group of my brother and my nephew and I all lifted each other up 
that there should be no division in the body, but that all its parts should have equal concern for each other. There was equal concern all week long. Does everybody have what they need to get through this day? And then you move on. There was never a question about if we were going to get out. There was some question about when. (laughs) But I never feared that we weren't going to be able to get through it because I knew that whatever we had and the people that were a part of our group was more than enough to be able to make it safely to the end. And that is true for the life of this church. We've got everything that we need. The resources and the people, if we would play our part and recognize that each and every one of you has a value in playing that part. My friends in Christ, God's kingdom is honored when we show God that we really are in this whole thing together, that we have concern for one another, that there's no division, because when that happens, we all suffer, but when it does happen, we are all honored. And when we all play the part that God has called us to play, that's when we know the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. I'm going to just say uh, a quick prayer during our offering time. Uh, We have offering plates at the back of the sanctuary. Um, If you're joining us online, you know, you can go to our website, www.sp4u.org, and there's a giving tab right there. And uh, You can give to either general fund or a variety of of different ministries that we're involved in. But today, specifically, we got a whole crew of people in the kitchen right now who are going to be delivering meals uh, down to Trinity this afternoon. And we know that it's so much more than just giving them food. But I've been down to our Trinity ministry before, so I know how much the recipients encourage one another in their daily walk. We all play our part. Ours is food. Theirs is encouragement, and all works together for the body of Christ. Let's pray together. God, we want to play a blessing upon the meal that's being prepared, even this moment that's going to be taken down this afternoon into the city, uh, to Trinity uh, Episcopal Church. And we pray, oh God, that those recipients receive nourishment, that they can go ahead and uh, pay that forward with the encouragement that they give to one another in the trials that they're facing in their lives. And so, so Lord, bless, bless that ministry effort that we have been a part of for so many years that we all might recognize that we play a piece in becoming the body of Christ. Amen. first
years ago, a young woman from North Carolina, I believe, set the state record, and she was lost out in the Gila wilderness for five weeks. They, uh, she, she's the woman that holds the state record for being lost the longest and still being found alive. They, they cut off the rescue search at three weeks, and two weeks later, there were two brothers that happened to be backpacking out there who found her. She was so weak that they knew that they couldn't walk out with her, so they left her a ton of provisions, but they talk about how guilty they felt after finding her and having to leave her um, because they knew it was going to be at least three days to get out of there to be able to send a helicopter back. And the woman looked at them, as the story goes, and says, it's, I'm going to be okay. You've given me everything that I need. To be able to make sure that I'm going to survive. We all play a part. We all play a part of the body of Christ. No one is greater, no one is lesser, but together what we get is hope. And that is when the kingdom of God is at hand. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up God's countenance upon you and bring you peace. And the mission of St. Paul's is to be a place of worship, refuge, and outreach. Have a great week, my friends. God bless.